Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Faith if you're new here and I'm an American living in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur to be specific. And I just went to the grocery store and thought you guys might be interested to see what an American living in Asia buys at the grocery store. A lot of you guys enjoyed my extreme budget challenge that I tried a few weeks ago where I only spent $40 for my family of four for the entire week. And that is not what I did today. I needed to restock some pantry items and get some produce for some simple dinners. So it's a pretty typical week of groceries. Usually I spend around $100 to $125 for our family of four, give or take. Sometimes it's more expensive just depending on what I need to restock in my pantry. But this was about $100 for all the groceries I'm gonna show you. And be sure to stay tuned because I'm gonna show you some really simple dinner ideas that you guys might enjoy as well. While I'm showing you guys my groceries, I'm gonna be sipping on some kombucha I bought. I actually haven't bought kombucha in ages. It was a little bit of a splurge. I used to make my own, but I got one of these and we'll be sipping on this while I show you what else I bought. So you might hear my daughter in the background. She is playing, just woke up from her nap, but I laid everything out on this table in my office because this is better lighting. And I'll just quickly walk you guys through what I got and then I will show you the meals I make with some of this food. I usually go to two different stores than the one I went to today, but I was nearby Ajaya. And so that's where I went, got some rolled oats. I need to make some more granola and I use rolled oats to make my own oat flour for my baked oats that I love and have every morning. Whole wheat flour, the other more local kind that I have been buying was a little off and had bugs. So I've just been getting Bob's Red Mill. It's a little more pricey, but it's always a winner. I splurged on some vanilla bean extract. Usually I don't have this in my pantry and just omit it from recipes, but I saw it and I don't see it very often. So I got a bottle of that for baking. I have a ton of raw peanuts coming in the mail because I make my own, own peanut butter, but they are not here yet and we are low. So I got some peanuts to make peanut butter. Needed baking powder for baking. This is not vegan or it's debatable, but we do buy honey here. I have some granola bars I wanna make with coconut lemons for hummus, lemony pastas, um, the water. I just love having lemons on hand. Kale is a big staple. I love to bake it and make kale chips. I'm eating a ton of sweet potatoes lately. I just love them so much, so I just bake these and have them in the fridge and eat them instead of bread or something, and they are so satisfying. Um, is this what you're supposed to do? Touch everything when you're doing a grocery haul. Got some white potatoes for a bean, creamy bean and kale soup I wanna make. Carrots for soups and another recipe. My kids love okra, so I got some okra, some lady fingers, celery for some pasta sauces and soups again. We always have so many bananas. I usually get more than this so that I can freeze half of them, bake with some of them, and then still have some to eat. We love rice cakes. That is something we eat daily, especially my one-year-old loves these either with peanut butter or just plain. And this was exciting. It is really hard for me to find affordable maple syrup here. Usually it's about $10 for a bottle this size, but I found it for about $5. So I got two. Normally I would get four, five, six when I find that price, but I just stuck with two. I plan to make a lentil bolognese. So I got some tomato products, tomato chopped tomatoes and tomato paste. I am not eating soy at the moment, so that is why you see all of these beans. I'm gonna make a white bean soup with the cannellini beans. I love having roasted or sauteed chickpeas with just some garlic and salt for Buddha bowls or I make hummus with them. And then butter beans are my kiddo's favorite beans. And then just trying to eat more whole grain pastas. So for my really extreme grocery budget challenge, I got white pasta, but usually I would get something like buckwheat or whole wheat. So I got some buckwheat pasta. And then I want to start making my homemade yogurt again. So I'm gonna try to make some yogurt with coconut cream. It's really really rich and thick and a little spoonful goes a long way. So we'll see if that happens. And then pineapple is one of my kiddos favorite fruits. And the last thing I got, which I just put on the side because it's not plant-based, but we usually do have eggs in our fridge. My husband and kiddos really like them. And about every once in a while, I'll have some eggs also. That is just something that is not plant-based, but we usually have it in our fridge just for quick lunches for my husband. That's something he can cook. This is everything that I purchased this week and it came to about $100, a little less than that. 
Um, obviously, if I had gone to a different store, I could have gotten a lot of this more cheaply. I could have gotten dried beans instead of canned. Definitely didn't need the vanilla and the maple syrup, but those are things that just make us feel like we're at home and enjoying the foods we want to enjoy. So let me show you some simple recipes that we enjoyed this week using these ingredients. Oh yeah, and I also got my husband some plant-based burgers. He can enjoy soy right now, so I knew he would like these for a quick lunch whenever I don't feel like cooking. Before I show you the dinner recipes I made this week, I need to do some meal prep. I can't not meal prep, and I know you guys really enjoy seeing what I make on a weekly basis just to stock my fridge with healthy foods and ingredients. So right now I am making homemade oat milk. Again, I can't eat a lot of things right now as I'm trying to heal my adult acne, yay genetics. And so I am making homemade oat milk just to have in my fridge for baking, for cereal, mainly for my baked oatmeal in the morning. And it is such a cost effective way to have non-dairy milk in your fridge. So I just blend some rolled oats with water and I'm trying to make it less slimy. So I added a little bit of cashew butter that I already had in my pantry and I blend it for only about 10 seconds on high. And I find that it is keeping it from being slimy versus when I blend it for a long time. So that is something to try. Then you can spill it all over your counter while you're trying to transfer it into a jar and you've got some delicious super super cheap homemade oat milk another thing i always like to meal prep every week is my own homemade oat flour so if you are buying oat flour please stop you can make it so much more cheaply if you have a food processor or even a really cheap blender works fine and all i do is put some rolled or quick oats into my blender and blend until a flour forms Usually it's a little warm after blending, so I allow it to cool before I put it in an airtight container and store it in my pantry. I love using oat flour for my baked oatmeal as it makes it more cakey, and it's just an awesome way to save some money. After I made my oat flour, I moved on to making some baked oatmeal cups. As you can see, oats are a huge staple in our family. They're inexpensive, hearty, full of fiber and whole grains, and so I use them every week in multiple ways. So here I'm just making some Chunky Monkey Baked Oatmeal Cups. I started with some mashed banana, ground flaxseed, cinnamon, leavening agents, some homemade oat milk, and then added in some rolled oats and some chopped up chocolate pieces. And you can also add in some chopped up walnuts to make these officially chunky monkey flavored. And you just stir this together and instead of baking it in a larger pan like an eight by eight baking dish or a nine by 13, you are gonna use muffin cups. My kids love anything small or in muffin shape. So they love these baked oatmeal cups and they store great in the fridge and come in so handy when your kids are hungry in the morning and you need something quick. Okay, I have to share one more oatmeal based thing and that is some dark chocolate granola. We always have homemade granola in our pantry, mainly for my husband now that I think about it. I don't really eat it that much, but he always puts it on top of his pancakes or eats it with yogurt and my kids especially love it just dry for a snack. So here my daughter is helping me make some dark chocolate granola. We started by putting a bunch of rolled oats, chopped nuts and seeds, pinch of salt and some coconut sugar into a bowl and then she stirred that all together to combine and then the wet ingredients you combine in a saucepan over low heat so into a saucepan we put some coconut oil maple syrup and cocoa powder and then you just bring that to a light simmer and whisk it all together until a smooth chocolatey mixture forms which you are going to pour all over your already combined oats nuts and seeds and then all you have to do is stir it well so that all of the oats are coated in that chocolatey mixture and you are going to spread this out onto a baking sheet either lined with a silicone baking mat or greased really well and bake it in the oven for about 20 minutes total I found that I love to bake it for about 10 minutes towards the top of my oven and then 10 more minutes towards the bottom. That way I don't have to stir the granola while it's baking and it can kind of set in this huge 
sheet and when you break it apart you get these huge clusters. So just a tip that I have learned works really well whenever I'm baking granola. This granola was some of the best granola I had baked in a long time. I think I just was patient and didn't stir it and allowed it to set and it came out in these huge chocolatey sweet clusters that were so good and my husband probably ate this entire batch on his own. As I mentioned in my grocery haul, we love making crispy chickpeas. All I do is heat some olive oil in a skillet, put on some drained, rinsed, and patted dry chickpeas and allow them to toast, saute, cook, whatever you wanna call it, and get golden brown. And then I add on some garlic powder and some salt and just let them cook until they're a little bit crispy and golden. And we eat these about three, four times a week, either on avocado toast or on baked sweet potatoes. So here I am stabbing my sweet potatoes that I have rinsed and put on a baking sheet and I just pop these in a hot oven about 400 degrees for about an hour until they are soft and fork tender and then I let them cool before storing them in a container and they are so handy to have on hand for a whole food carb source. These potatoes are Japanese sweet potatoes, so they're purple on the outside and white on the inside, and they are so creamy and sweet. All right, now let's talk about some of the meals we enjoyed using the meal prepped items I made right after I did my grocery haul. So as you can see here, we use those crispy chickpeas in multiple ways, either on salads with a good sauce and some pickled onions, or on the Japanese sweet potatoes with some homemade hummus that I made with more cans of chickpeas. They really are so versatile and my entire family loves them, so definitely give some crispy chickpeas a try. Every morning for breakfast, for quite a while now, I have been making some blended baked oats, except I don't blend anything, I just use my homemade oat flour. This is a quieter way for me to make it when my kiddos are sleeping. As you know, I get up really early and eat pretty early, so here I am just stirring all the ingredients for my chocolate blended baked oatmeal together in a bowl, and then I transfer it to a two cup ramekin. I can link all of these items I use down below in case you're interested. Pop it in the oven for about 20-25 minutes, top it with my cashew butter and some ground flax seeds and pumpkin seeds, and it is my favorite way to start the day. Next up, I want to share two really simple dinner recipes that you guys might enjoy. The first main meal I made was some creamy white bean soup. So to a Dutch oven, I added some olive oil, allowed that to get warm before adding in my chopped onions, carrots, and celery. I sauteed those veggies until soft and then added in some garlic and allowed that to cook for another minute or two. Next, I added in some dried thyme. I don't know where I heard to rub it together, but I still do that. I feel like it allows it to bloom and flavor my soup better. And next I'm adding in some vegetable broth or you can just add in some water and salt and my peeled and chopped white potatoes. Lastly, I added in a couple canned of white beans, some bay leaves, and I just brought all of this to a simmer and allowed it to cook for about 20, 30 minutes until the potatoes were nice and fork tender. While that was happening, I soaked some cashews in some boiling water. And once the cashews were soft, I added them to a blender with some fresh water and some of the soup mixture and blended this until a creamy, almost cheesy liquid came together. And then I added that back to my soup. Once I stirred this all together, a really rich, creamy, hearty, comforting soup formed that the entire family loved. We especially loved it with some homemade sourdough. Yes, I am a sourdough bread baker now, which is so exciting, and it paired perfectly with the soup. The second successful dinner I made was some lentil bolognese, and I made this by sauteing some onion and a little bit of olive oil until super soft. I actually let it saute for quite a while until it started to brown the bottom of my Dutch oven, and I would just add water to deglaze the pan whenever I needed to. Then I added in some garlic, some thyme, oregano, and salt, 
and stir this all together until well combined before adding in some really good quality tomato paste. I stirred this all together until a really rich, thick, tomatoey paste formed before adding in some dry red wine that, yes, my husband had left out overnight on the counter. And I figured, what the heck, it's just gonna be cooked down anyways, and it ended up working out fine. Lastly, I added in some vegetable broth, red lentils, and some really finely chopped walnuts. And then I brought this to a simmer and allowed it to simmer until nice and thick and creamy. And we really enjoyed this recipe. It's not my own recipe. It's from the blog Rainbow Plant Life. I'm sure you guys have heard of her. And all of the recipes I've tried of hers are delicious. So definitely give this recipe a try. I will link it down below in the description box. We served it over the buckwheat pasta with some roasted broccoli, which I forgot to talk about in my haul, but this ended up being a really hearty, delicious dinner that the whole family devoured. All right guys, that was my grocery haul, meal prep, and cooking session for this week. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoy meal prep videos, be sure to subscribe and watch this meal prep video that I made a couple weeks ago for some more plant-based meal inspiration. See you guys soon, bye.